Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles. And first and foremost, what do you think of my nice new sweater? And don't worry, I'm still totally wearing pajama pants. I'm sorry guys, but it's the rules. The board of directors at Barnacles Nerdgasm Enterprises LLC are required to wear pajama pants. I'm sorry, it's just a requirement of the business. You wouldn't want me to violate the dress code. All right, today we're gonna to be reviewing a device here from Epifan Video. This is the AVIO 4K USB 3.0 video capture device. Now, I reached out to the company a couple of months ago and asked them to send me a sample, and instead of promptly reviewing it like I promised them, I literally used the device for everything except for reviewing it. So I figured I should probably get around to actually creating a video on it because I quite like the device and I think it's very unique in a lot of ways that I'm gonna to explain to you in this video. But if you are interested in live streaming or you are interested in recording video for YouTube, I'm gonna show you all the really cool things that this device does and the best part about it is it requires no drivers. That is correct. If you are running Windows 10 or Mac OS, it's just gonna work. You wanna know another shocker? Made in Canada. When was the last time you saw anything come through this nerd cave that wasn't made in China? Now they sent me two of the devices to review. One I've already taken out of the box, but I figured why not start with an unboxing so you guys can see exactly what to expect in the box. We're gonna need something to cut this box open. Bad knife. <laughs> and I still haven't sharpened it. Come on out. Oh man, it's taped on the bottom too. This will not defeat me. All right, what do we have here? On top, we have a little insert that says activate your product warranty, which I did not do. Um, also, it says to get the firmware updates. These things actually do get pretty frequent firmware updates, and one of them did solve one of my initial problems that I had. So make sure that you are running the latest firmware. Now, inside of the box here, you have the device itself. It's all shrink-wrapped here to this little piece of cardboard. It's very small. And they include one HDMI cable and one USB 3 cable. And that is literally it, guys. There is nothing else here. You don't need any CDs, no install stuff. All you need is connect the cables and capture and share. That's it. Like, I thought that was kind of BS at first, and I thought that I'd need something really special, and you don't. It actually even works with capture like OBS, XSplit, VNC. It's crazy. All right. Ugh. Uh, wing. So that is it guys, that is the whole device right there. On one side you can see there's an HDMI, and on the other side there's a USB 3. That is absolutely it. The device is very solid. It feels like you could drive over it with a car. This whole part is aluminum. The end caps are, uh, actually they're metallic too. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. I kind of figured they'd be plastic. Now inside there is a heat sink and there is a fan and the fan is whisper quiet. If you are in a noise isolated room and you put your ear up to it, you can hear it but from a foot or two away, you can't hear it. It's dead silent. Now, if you guys have been watching the last couple of episodes of Tech Talk, you'll notice that the camera angle has changed, and that is because I'm now streaming from my laptop connected to a Zoom H6n, my Audio-Technica AT2050 microphone, and my webcam, which everybody asks how I get the depth of field effect and why it looks so good. It's because I'm actually using a Sony a FDR AX53 camcorder as my camera. And that's where this comes in because you can actually plug this into any HDMI device and capture the video to the computer. That includes capturing the output from another computer. So technically I can capture the output from my main computer while gaming and stream it from here or record it from here without putting any load on my system. Or I can connect my cameras up and use them as webcams all the way up to 4K, 30 frames per second. Now, if you're capturing game footage, a lot of you guys are going to say all we care about is 1080 60. And this does actually do 1080 60 for capture, and it does a beautiful job of it. And if you want, you can even buy the less expensive version of this that just does 1080 and not the 4K. Now, the reason I got the 4K 31 is for when I'm doing live streams that are just basically my face or me showing a demo in software or something like that where I want to project a 4K image, but it doesn't require a lot of fast motion. Now I'm going to show you how easy this device works. I already have my camera on over here. I'm going to go ahead and just flip that around. It's pointing at me. Hey there, camera. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the computer. Now one thing to make certain of is you want to put this device on a USB 3 controller pretty much by itself. You can put some other devices like mice and stuff on there, but realize that this is putting out a 4K stream and is going to saturate that bus. So you're not going to want to put like two or three of these on a single USB 3 bus. You're going to want to make sure you spread them out over multiple controllers. And if you want to use a ton of them, you might even want to get a PCIe add-in board just to give you more bandwidth. Now plugged into my camera right here, I have an HDMI cable. Most uh, cameras, DSLRs and everything nowadays all support. HDMI. There's a couple of different connector types, but you can always get the adapters to go between them. 
And now I'm just going to take that and plug it into the other side of the device. Now you can see there is a blue light on the device indicating that everything's okay. If there's a problem or a bandwidth issue, that will flash different colors. And you can go look at their website to get information on what the different flashy colors mean. But as long as you're blue, you're good. Now, like I was saying, this will work with any capture software. The software I prefer to use is OBS Studio because it's free. And I will have links in the video description to where you can purchase the AVIO capture devices and also where you can download the OBS Studio software. Now you can use other stuff like XSplit or VNC depending on what you're doing. But for me, OBS Studio has provided the best experience overall. Now let me go ahead and open up OBS. It says there's a new version available, but I don't really care. And you see the camera is already open here on the screen. And as you guys can see, the camera is already open on the screen and there's also very little latency. You would expect from a USB device to be a lot more latency from that. It's actually minimal enough that you could probably play most games. All right guys, I'm gonna start a recording here through OBS, recording the video from that camera live over the HDMI cable. So now, you can see me right here, I have my microphone. Hey, what's up guys? This is what I usually use when I'm live streaming Tech Talk and you can see the screens behind me. Now I have all of the adjustment of this camera. If you have a DSLR, that means you can do manual focus. That means you can go in and play with the exposure settings. You can go in and, and play with the color. If you have an HDR capable camera, you can even enable the HDR mode. So it gives you a lot of flexibility that a standard webcam doesn't. Now granted, it's gonna be a lot more expensive of a setup, but if you're investing in something you wanna get serious about, this will be a webcam's pants off. Now, one of the cool features that it has, that it'll also capture the HDMI audio. So as long as you're channeling the audio or splitting the audio out through HDMI, you don't have to send a second signal to the other computer capturing. It can get both the audio and video through one cable. And on my particular Sony webcams here, I can even hook external shotgun microphones to them and stuff like that. And it will actually send the audio with the video synced together through the HDMI cable. You'll have to check what camera you have and if it has that capability, but most modern cameras do, which means you're not going to only get video, you're also going to get audio from your camera. And I will tell you what, most cameras, including DSLRs, have far better microphones in them than any of the Logitech webcams. Now to set this up required absolutely no drivers. Once I plug the device in, all I had to do was go down and add a video capture device in OBS and select the device as AVIO 4K. Or if you have the lesser AVIO devices, you just select that one. If you have multiple AVIO devices, they actually all show up individually and you can select them. And then you can come down and, and customize the resolution if it doesn't get the input resolution correct. You can also change the color space, the profiles, the video format, all kinds of settings you can tinker with to get the picture to look exactly how you want it to look. Now, the nice thing about OBS is you can also mix in other audio sources. Like right now you're hearing me on an AT2050 microphone through my Zoom H4n, this is what I normally use, is my tech talk and live streaming setup. Or you can hear me through my Sennheiser stereo shotgun microphone that I have on my main camera. Now there's a couple different ways that you can connect this device up. You can either go directly from your video source like your computer or your gaming system or your camera directly into the box, the AVIO box. But the problem is there's no output on the box, which means you can't then run a cable to a screen and see it on the screen and also capture it from the same output. But what you can do is buy a cheap HDMI splitter through Amazon or wherever you want. I'll list a couple down below that you can use. And those splitters will allow you to have an image simultaneously go lag free to the display and then split off another feed to the capture device. Now that's not necessary when you're capturing cameras since you want to capture the camera on the screen on the computer. But if you're doing something with gaming that requires low latency, I would recommend using the splitter. Now another option that you have is if you're capturing a computer is you can actually run one of the other HDMI or display ports off the back of your graphics card into the capture device and then go into the software and tell it that you want to duplicate that display on those two monitors. That way the primary monitor is still getting a signal and the second port is sending a duplicate of that signal to the box. Now that's what I do when I'm streaming on my main computer because this little box here does a lot of the heavy lifting and that way I don't have to do screen capture through software which is very intensive. So today I ran a couple of game capture scenarios on my main rig over here which is a dual Xeon dual Titan XP rig so it's got plenty of power and I wanted to see what the difference was between capturing the screen and directly using software in OBS or capturing the display with this device and feeding it back into OBS encoding. And what I found is when I was streaming at 4K 30 frames per second and recording it locally, I was having significant frame drop issues inside of the game. And the game was getting starved because I was using the encoder on the graphics card to do the heavy lifting. Now when I switched it over to CPU encoding and used this, 
my CPU utilization went way up because it re-encoded that video into the file, but what it did is freed up the game and the GPU so that it ran liquid smooth. Now I realize most of you guys aren't gonna be capturing 4K footage from your game or live streaming 4K because of the bandwidth requirements, but it's definitely something to be aware of and to future-proof yourself too. And even if you use OBS to capture the game footage, it's say 4K 60 frames per second, you also have the option of using this, like I said, with one or more cameras, depending on how many of these devices you buy, and using those cameras in 4K so that you can switch between your scenes and put on a really cool show. So in a nutshell, if you're looking to reduce CPU utilization while streaming or to use a secondary computer in your live stream, these devices are awesome because they don't require any drivers. They use the drivers that are built into Windows and they're rock solid. I haven't had any problems with the device crashing. The most severe problem that I had is that I had some sync issues initially plugging it into some devices and I simply just unplugged the HDMI cable and plugged it back in and everything just magically started working again which is nice. All right, well, if you guys would like to pick up your own AVIO 4K or one of the lesser devices, depending on what your needs are and your budget, I will have links to everything in the video description. Also, as always, if you have any questions, come over and ask me on Twitter. I am at Barnacles, And feel free to leave comments down below to ask any questions or to let me know if you discovered anything about this device that I may have missed. And also, I would like to ask you all to be the loud majority and hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. If you didn't enjoy the video, go ahead and hit that dislike button. They're both important important stats to my channel. But I will tell you guys, this is the easiest capture device that I have ever used and by far the most capable. And I've had quite a few different capture devices, including the Aver Media Live Gamer HD, which is a PCI Express card. And I still use this 100% of the time. All right, guys, I got to start preparing for Emerald City Comic Con. Until next time.